uh, als docent. En hij heeft uh, deze zomer master leren en innoveren afgerond. Waarbij hij zich de vraag heeft gesteld, hoe kan het dat ik zie dat video een belangrijk hulpmiddel kan zijn voor docenten om hun inhoud over te brengen. Maar waarom zien mijn collega's dat niet? Wat, is, wat belemmert hen en hoe kan ik ze helpen om uh, die belemmeringen uh, te overkomen? En de resultaten van zijn research zal hij nu met ons delen. Dus um, nou, ongeveer een half uur tijd voor, uh, voor de presentatie en daarna is er nog tien minuten tijd voor vragen. Maar dan kom ik weer bij Great, thank you very much indeed uh, for the introduction, Andre, and thank you everybody for being here. Um, you've had to make a choice, and I'm extremely honoured that you've chosen for this presentation because there are some really fantastic presentations out there. Uh, my name is Zach Wolfit. I'm from London originally. I've been in the in the Netherlands uh, since 2000, so I'm becoming uh, I'm becoming Dutch. Maybe you can tell. I don't know. Um, and um, what we're going to look at is um, my my presentation was called Catching the Wave and I've changed it a little bit to video teaching an essential skill for 21st century lecturers. I believe it is, hopefully you will, uh, uh, maybe you're already convinced, but I think it is very important. There are plenty of waves in my presentation, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'm also looking for your input, so maybe there's some feedback, some ideas you have, trying to develop a way of presenting the complexity of video teaching, so ideas on that will be uh, fantastic. And I work, by, uh, I work at, uh, in Holland uh, in, uh, in Diemen. We've also, you may notice, we've got the swivel cam here. So I also welcome everybody who's watching, uh, not live, but when you watch it back later, welcome to the presentation. What we're going to look at is the impact of video teaching, um, or the, the impact of video on teaching uh, in education. Um, the research that I've done on, on, in that recently. Um, the results, the prototype I've made and also um, dis hopefully time for the discussion. And if I hear Jason uh, speaking about the, the story, the story is uh, the teacher confronting the monster of technology. And how can we help the teacher to slay the, the dangerous, dark, scary monster of technology so they actually can move forward and improve student learning? That's a little bit of the, uh, the narrative in, uh, in my story. So I have to have a narrative. Um, so we'll look at uh, video, uh, how it's impacting teaching. But I'm quite interested to know a little bit about the audience here. Um, how many of you are, are teachers? A few teachers, okay. And other, what other types of roles do you have? Can you shout it out? IT. E-learning. E e Video librarian, okay, great. Um, how many of you here have actually videoed yourself as a sort of, uh, to communicate? Actually made a permanent video. Okay, so we've got quite a few converts here. Fantastic. Who's done it once and that was, that was just, you did it once? Okay. Quite often people say, yeah, I did it in my teacher training and that was 10 years ago. Okay, it's like, so you're more actively doing it. Fantastic. Um, who's, who uses sort of uh, YouTube links in information that they send out, like to a video of some sort? Just, just about everybody, I would think. What about uh, webinars? How many people have communicated in webinars? Quite a few of you. What about making a, a live lecture capture of some information? How many people have done live lecture capture? Okay, a few people, great. What about a pre-recorded web lecture? Where you, okay. This is certainly more than normally when I ask this question, so um, it's, it's, good. it's good to check that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what about, um, what about uh, like a screencast where you record the screen on your computer screen? Great, okay. It's a good, I feel at home in this, with this group of people. That's, that's really positive. Um, the other day I was walking around uh, in Holland. I had my little uh, tripod with me, and someone said, this is what they did to me. Oh, you're going to video your classroom. Did I just see that? This was what somebody was thinking. <laughs> that was the motion I saw. And I thought, okay, well, that says something about uh, a certain perception that people have about videoing. And here we have some beautiful uh, old cameras. Maybe back in 1965, if you were a baby boomer and your the, the parents were you know, ahead of the curve, they might have been using the first uh, domestic uh, video camera. And you can see different types of cameras moving on. Um, how many of you have got a video camera with you right now? 
Everybody. Who has more than who has more than one video camera on them right now? Who's got three video cameras on them? Home phone, work phone, iPad. Has anyone got four? Okay. So we've we've gone from this, we've gone from this aspect to this aspect where every, you know video technology is just everywhere video images the ability to record and make video is sort of increased enormously now I became interested in uh, video teaching about five years ago I recorded one of my um, the presentation I would do at an open day I teach tourism management my students are all around the world they're from other countries so I made a present a recording of my presentation at the open day and it became very interesting when uh, my colleague uh, Tom Fisser shared with me the viewing curve. And somewhere around here was the beginning of the summer when I went on holiday. And somewhere about here was when I came back. So during the time that I was relaxing on the beach, taking it easy, my video teaching, my communication was being viewed by a very large audience. I thought, that's fantastic. This has got real advantage. Um, I thought it was quite interesting. So we talk about now the wave of technology. This is the image I use to describe the sort of digitalization. The beautiful picture of Mount Fuji and the great ocean wave. It's not destructive, it's not a tsunami, it's just a wave of change. And you can ask yourself, where on this curve are you? I think with this audience, a lot of people are going to be more on that side. There's no correct place to be, but you think about where are you on the digitalization curve. It could be video, it could be technology. And where would you like to be? Um, this is another aspect I, I called the, the research catching the wave. This was a few years ago in California. I'm from London. I did not grow up surfing. Tony, however, was born in Hawaii. He can't even remember learning to surf. I wanted to go surfing. So I get on the board and the wave comes. I'm not strong enough. I don't physically have the muscles, I don't have the strength. I really want to go surfing, but I don't have the strength. I haven't spent my life training. Tony comes behind me, paddles really hard. I put my feet on the front of his board, and as the wave comes, he paddles, and I get enough momentum to get going and start surfing. I couldn't have done it without him. So what I'm interested in here is how you can help teachers to catch the wave. We need that little push. You need that little bit of impetus. You can't always do it on your own. So that's the idea of catching the wave. Um, this is, well, this is where we are now. Look at it. It's exactly the same, isn't it? We've got uh, the good students in the front. We've got the accreditation panel here, just on the left-hand side. Um, at the back, maybe losing a little bit of attention. Somebody was out Drinking last night, I can see over here, this poor chap here, look at this. Um, sometimes it's more interesting at the back. This is Bologna, 1380, so 700 years ago. We've got pretty much the same setup, but things have changed. I want you to look very carefully now. If you look carefully at the image, don't miss it. Um, almost, nothing has, almost nothing has changed. So we're using the same setup, but now everybody in, the, in the, the group has one video camera. Some people have three video cameras. So things are changing. How on earth can we, uh, can we move forward? Um, this is perhaps the group that we're teaching to now. You go to a concert, you don't see the concert, you just see the screens. Our students, millennials, Generation X, they're fully engaged. They're connected all the time. They're communicating outside the class. We saw from Jason Ola some of the uh, amazing opportunities. So it's diff how do we move forward? How do we embrace that sort of uh, environment? How do we engage these students? And of course, the ultimate goal is to improve, the, improve their learning. If we're just using technology for the sake of it, it's not going to do any good. Um, so I was interested in researching the following subject. I did the research for the Masters uh, Lehren and Ian Veren, part of in Holland. A really fantastic course. I studied it for two years and I learned a great deal uh, in that time. So I recommend it for anybody who wants to take that further. Um, I sort of tried to identify what is the problem. And I, I saw the potential for teaching through video. And I saw this stairway 
for many of my colleagues, it was sort of shrouded in mist. It's obscure. It's impenetrable. We don't know where we're going. We sort of know there's something up there. We don't know how to get there. There's all these obstacles in the way. So I thought maybe through my research, perhaps I can shed some light on it. Understand what's in the way, what's stopping people from moving forward. Um, so when I started to talk to my colleagues, there was a lot of things they said, yeah, students don't like the videos. Students won't watch them. Oh, no, web lectures are really boring. Oh, I look really awkward on video. Yeah, I look a bit funny, I look a bit fat, my hair looks a bit funny. I, I don't know, my voice sounds funny. Um, yeah, if I do video teaching, nobody's going to come to my lessons. Nobody's going to be, there's going to be the empty classroom. Yeah, I have in, a lot of interaction in my classes. If I do video teaching, there won't be any interaction anymore. The only reason I'm a teacher, I love that interaction with students. So these are some of the ideas. What's the benefit for me? I've got no time. All these sort of obstacles, I, I sort of began to understand them. So I wanted to research those in more detail. So I conducted uh, you know, a literature review. Just a couple of things that were of interest here. Um, we have the, the tipping point. Video use in education has reached a tipping point. We've gone from where it's been quite a lot to it's really a great deal of uh, a video usage availability. Um, the other aspect is um, you have what we call um, the need for professional support. You can't just do it on your own. Maybe the innovators can, people at the front of the curve, but in general, teaching staff need a little bit of help, uh, and that's professional help. I also have this, I know it's, you've just had your coffee, so it might be difficult to look at this image, but it's disconnecting the lesson, and that's very mu much what uh, Jason uh, was saying earlier. He was like, where is the classroom? The classroom is now disconnected from the physical place, the, where the teacher is, where the students are. They don't have to physically be in the same place, in different places. Um, and we also have the idea of a zone of possibilities. We don't know how to use technology yet. But it gives us a zone of possibilities. This gives us an interesting aspect. We also looked at aspects such as uh, theories of constructive alignment, how you can teach something that you're assessing, making sure that matches. And also the theory of multimedia, how much information any person can take in through a multimedia presentation. My words, my images, your brain's taking it in. How much can you take in? How should I present it in a way that you get it? If I'm doing that through video, what works, what doesn't work? Um, and finally, I also use the TPAC model. Um, who, uh, who is familiar with that model? Okay, great. So I don't need to go into in, in too much detail. Um, the idea is the different, the nature of knowledge that is needed for teachers to integrate technology. Often we just see technological information given, but there's also content. How does that relate to my course tourism management? How does that relate to my teaching? How do I need to change my teaching to actually communicate into the video screen? So those were the, those were the sort of ideas that we had. And then I started to think, okay, what is video teaching? And I looked at a number of different models, representations, uh, on web lectures, Puntanel, there's, you know, there's, a, there's a model, there's a tree. I looked at other aspects. How do you arrange it? How do you set it up so you can sort of understand it? And there's screencasts, and there's web lectures, and there's Kenneth's clips, and there's MOOCs. And how can you arrange those so that they sort of, uh, there's some sort of logic to it? Um, so what I did was I set up an axis here, and this is just one way of representing the different types of video teaching. And I'm very happy to get input. It's not complete, but it's just sort of, just a thought process. On the vertical axis, what you have is the complexity of the technology for the teacher. So at the bottom, it's, there's no complexity. It's very simple. At the top, it's quite complicated and difficult for the teacher. And on the horizontal axis, what you have is um, the visibility or the presence of the teacher um, on the screen. On the left-hand side, they're not present at all. On the right-hand side, they're fully present and engaged. So using this sort of way of representing it, I, uh, I then started to look at aspects such as is... Um, the teacher recorded, are they visible? So the first ones on the left-hand side are things like you show a YouTube clip. You're not visible, you're not recorded, but you're using some sort of video. And then you can move forward, maybe you're doing a slide cast with some audio. 
where you record but you're not visible. And then you do things like Skype, uh, FaceTime. You engage with students through that, but you very rarely record a Skype session. It's more just communication. Maybe through a webinar, you might, it might be recorded. But you're, you're on screen. You're communicating with your hands, with your voice, but it's not recorded. And then you get to the next stage. This is, for me, where it gets really interesting. Then you've got things like screencasts. Um, you've got uh, pre-recorded web lectures. You've got live lecture capture here. And at that point, the teacher says, right, I'm really in, I'm in that. I'm teaching through the camera. I'm using the camera. Yeah. Great. Okay, so you, you are now using Skype. I would say most of the teachers that I've spoken to, they just they use Skype as a communication middle. Skype definitely has the potential to, to be recorded. Yeah. So it's... It, yeah. So then you can move into that. So I'm interested with Skype because it's quite commonly used, or FaceTime. People communicate that way. And they see themselves on screen. They see their video image, and you sort of break that fear. And once you've started to communicate through Skype, then you can move to the next level. Um, and then further up, you've got things like a full-on series of documentary where the, te you know, the person teaching is fully involved in um, the, uh, the, the teaching process through the video. And I've got degree of complexity. Maybe you don't adjust your slides at all. Maybe you rewrite and redevelop your content completely basing on, based on the type of uh, teaching. And it's this middle bit here that I'm particularly focusing on, where you go from uh, this temporary, and then so I can extend Skype over to being recorded now as well, and Google Hangouts. You go from it being sort of temporary to being actually part of teaching. So sort of, this is the, the sort of zone where you're, a lot of teachers are staying on one side, and it's like, guys, what does it take to get you onto the next step? So I've got some examples, um, and I think uh, most people in the audience will be familiar with it, just to show different types of, uh, of teaching. Tom, do you want to run the, um, the screencast? This is just um, a little example of a screencast using Screencast-O-Matic. Has any, who has not made a screencast? Which people in the audience? Okay, a few of you. So for, for you guys, this is, this is particularly interesting. You can just download the software in, I think it's 30 seconds, and it says start recording. Maybe, uh, how much of the bike can I keep in the bottom? Yeah. Oh. Okay, let me check the, uh, composition is good. The color here seems to be okay. Okay. I'm going to perhaps make the sky a bit darker. So what you see there is just recording the action on the screen. I think the content of my lesson there was, was just to demonstrate the functionality of, of Screencast-O-Matic. I'm always amazed by how many manuals we get on how to cl click through screens and so on. Um, and yet, you can explain it very simply just by doing a quick screencast. So that's an example of a screencast. Yeah. Is this like the same as Snagit? Uh, Snagit, I think you make a... I don't know, can you get a film with Snagit as well? Or is it just it's, a photograph? You make, no, you make a movie out of what you were doing on it, computer. It's probably similar then. Voice, yeah. Okay, yeah, and the, with a screencast, you can do the voice, or you can do also the, um, the video image as well. Yeah. Um, then the next type is live lecture capture. That's what we're doing now here with an audience and with perhaps a live audience on the other side, if it's live streamed, or um, something that can be viewed later. You'll get the link for this so you can see what it actually looks like with the, um, with the iPad swivel. Um, live lecture capture, this is just a, a quick example of what it looks like. This is a recent lecture I've done. Um, and I teach, if I'm doing this... How can you define the general environment? We'll do that in the, in the, during the course of the lecture. The general environment is the DPEST. All right, you can stop it there. The demographic, environmental, technological, economic, political and social factors. And I'll explain to you what those are. Okay. So what you see there is I'm really teaching in the screen. Normally you're told, don't stand in front of the PowerPoint. You know, your face looks funny. But I sort of do it the other way. I, I really, and I'm trying to do that here with the swivel, stand in front of the PowerPoint specifically because of the technology 
and then I'm actually in it for the students. So that's a, di a different way of sort of doing video teaching. Uh, the final one is um, a web lecture, a pre-recorded web lecture in a studio. In this case, Tom has helped me make, a, make those uh, pre-recordings. Do you want to run that one? Um, this one. So you can see, see how that's set up and the functionality. You can speed it up, which is great. Students love this. You want to slow down again? Yeah. So by speeding it up, and because it's multimedia, you can actually follow it. At twice the speed, you can actually follow quite clearly what's going on. Do you want to just pause it? This is an example of what we call chunking in order to, um, in order to uh, keep the message simple. I've just taken one subject and I've put four slides, intro, piece of text, picture, and then a summary. So a very simple five-minute little clip. Let's go to the next, uh, back to the slides. I'm smiling there, which is good. Sometimes you pause it and you don't look so great. Can you go back to the PowerPoint, yeah? Great. So the question I had is teaching, um, this is the definition I had, teaching video in which the teacher plays an active role, is visible and audible, is recorded, and when the screen, screen presence of the teacher plays an important element in the didactic process. It's just sort of my working definition, uh, and I'm going to sort of come back to that and refine it. The research I was doing was design research, which means you need to make something. What was interesting when I started research is I did not know what I was going to make. I did a very in-depth needs analysis. This was the question I was looking at. What are the characteristics of the support to assist teachers in the tourism team in Holland Demon in developing video teaching? Zooming in right in on one team, 24 teachers, just focusing what are their needs specifically. Uh, and I was looking at things such as what is video teaching, what are the functions of video teaching, um, how are we currently using it in our teaching team, um, What's the level? What support do we need? And finally, um, how can we use it specifically in our course content? That's what I was looking at. I conducted uh, um, a mixture of uh, qualitative and quantitative. This is a survey that I did to find out the level of teaching. I conducted about 23 interviews. And you all know how dangerous that is to start conducting interviews from the top uh, director, board of directors down to students. You end up with loads of data, 65,000 words, 110 pages. And you then had to code it, come up with colors. And then gradually ideas started to come through. Things like themes that were appearing. What, what are my colleagues talking about? What is the information that they're, they're sharing? I got creative. I cut, put up about 200 different codes. I cut them all up, pasted them onto the bedroom wall. And then I thought, OK, we've, here comes the tea pack again. I can start to see some patterns, technology. You can see my focus was much more on the technology and the pedagogic, not so much on the content side. Um, so with that, I could then start to develop uh, some results. You've got all those words. What do you do with those words? Um, seven sort of key themes emerged from my colleagues. The first one was, we really are at a transition point. Te teaching is changing. Um, how do we deal with that new type of teaching? Um, I like to have interaction with my, my students. Don't take that away from me. Don't, don't. That's, that's what I live for. The live audience. Don't. Don't take it away. Um, how do you use web lectures in teaching? Um, how can you learn from the inside and out? A lot of reflection. When you see yourself on video, you really learn a lot about your teaching, your presenting style. You want to learn from other people. You want to share your teaching. How do I do the content specifically? Um, how do I use technology in the teaching process? And finally, um, the, the TPAC always exists within the organization. How is my organization supporting me? How much time do I get? Um, what's the strategy? What's the policy? What's our vision? Am I facilitated or am I fighting alone as a, a sort of innovator? So that was the sort of ideas from that. Some aspects that came through, um, video teaching is planned. You have to think it through in advance. You can be spontaneous. Um, if you're doing a web lecture, you can't be. You've got to have it very linear structured. Um, I have these eggs here. This was a piece of research from Guo, Kim, and Rubin. It specifically focused on MOOCs. They did a very large-scale um, analysis of data from MOOCs for a couple of courses. 
and they found on those courses the student attention span after about four to six minutes you've lost it on a video so watching a video maybe in a, in a live lecture it's only two minutes you guys are doing well because you're still with me but on video image four to six minutes people sort of they've had enough they click so if you're going to present information you need to chunk it so th this I found very interesting as a uh, an aspect of finding when I asked my students what they think this is from the, the course I finished a couple of weeks ago this is what they said the web lectures are very useful uh, good that the class is filmed uh, the web lectures are really good the web lectures really help to understand the material better one student said get rid of the camera because it's a little bit distracting and I understand that but in general the students are very positive here are some of my students last week presenting Argentina I'm not sure they're smiling because of the video teaching I've done um, but these are my students and I know they appreciate uh, the time I put into recording my lectures some other aspects we have the functions of video teaching there's many different ways we can use it in different contexts um, you can use it to engage the students contrary to that idea there's no interaction actually by presenting it in, in front my classes now are much more interactive than they've ever been I've got really interactive classes because I don't have to stand there delivering content um, I asked my colleagues what they have uh, what their level of teaching is using YouTube quite a lot Skype a little bit comes to web lectures not really you know um, live lecture capture no thanks screencast what's that and in this group there's a different response but in general when I ask uh, teachers this is the sort of pattern that I follow um, I asked my colleagues what would make it helpful what structure uh, of, inf of support would be helpful I gave them lots of options and we came up with the following they would like to have a workshop a training that's very interactive get the information up front in a safe environment um, that would help them so we come back to that staircase and that staircase is becoming clearer it's going from being a staircase which is perhaps a little bit intimidating just to a pathway we know what those different obstacles are and we can address each one of them so I then brought back in the um, the TPAC model I brought back the findings all that data so I could figure out what to do before during and after to support my colleagues with their video teaching then you get your conclusions what did I conclude um, I developed a prototype and the prototype is in the format of a beautiful uh, workshop it's a training small scale uh, with maybe two to three teachers where they actually make the video they share their experiences we run a couple of those well the first one was uh, was recently and in that context teachers actually see the other person making the video so you're making it with two or three people and then you reflect on that process you watch your video back you critique it you give each other feedback and what you notice is having done it once as teachers are like actually I'm not so bad here's here's the workshop we're running um, and you can see a couple of teachers reviewing it and here's one of the colleagues online looking at hey it's a practice video how did it go and you see the teachers can actually do quite a good job so having tried it it becomes a little bit easier um, if we look at the uh, the conclusions um, really we have to look for where we're going to go next the next aspect I'm going to focus on over the next year is trying to get every one of my colleagues to have done at least one piece of video teaching by the end of the study year just try it I've got my list my hit list they know I'm coming I'm knocking on the door I haven't received the link to your video teaching yet it's June what's going on screencast o matic download it make a video clip for me just to sort of encourage people to do that and I'd like every teacher in the group those 24 teachers to take part in the workshop and of course there's a lot of interest outside of that for people to uh, to have uh, workshops in different contexts um, very very glad to be able to present today and share these ideas I'm also very glad to share the the research that I've uh, that I've written so uh, you have my contact details um, also through I'm on the app here so you can get my details I'd be very happy to send you a copy of the research and next week I'm also presenting in Brussels as part of the video in higher education so if you're going to be there next week you don't need to come to my presentation because it will be remarkably similar um, Andre had uh, mentioned a little bit about SIG media and education um, 
There's my report. It's not quite as big as that, so don't be intimidated. Um, and finally, I would, uh, would just like to say that it's up to us now to help our colleagues to catch that wave. We, I need your help. We need to help our colleagues to get on that wave of video teaching. Um, and if we do that, then video teaching, I think, is an essential uh, skill for 21st uh, century lecturers. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, <laughs> how did I do time-wise? Uh, actually, we've got uh, about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. So we have 10 minutes. We don't have to have 10 minutes of questions, but uh, if there are questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. Also, uh, in Dutch is fine. In Nederlands is helemaal geen probleem. As you leave that, leuke vinden. Ik vind het ook geweldig. Yes. What are the limitations of uh, screencast uh, or Mavic? screencast o I, I have to say I'm not an expert on that particular software, but for me, I just downloaded it, I made a recording, within three minutes, my video clip was online. So I think it's, it probably has limitations, but I can't... Yeah. The free, free version is... Okay, so 15 minutes you can have for free. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And the thing is that now in the first year student, uh, in the first year the students are not coming to the actual lecture, but also they don't watch it at home. So now we <laughs> ask them to be prepared with the information from the lecture yeah. to come to our practical evacuation. Yeah. Uh, but they are not. Um, yeah, uh, they are not uh, uh, engaging in the lecture, not on the evacuation. Right. So what are your suggestions? Okay, so I'll just repeat the question. Um, you make your, you capture your lectures live, and then the students don't come and they don't watch them. Yeah. That's really the very worst part of the, uh, the equation. Yeah. And that's where the challenge really comes in, to adjust your curriculum, um, to adjust how you're teaching, and then what do you do in your class. The first set of lectures I did, I recorded 40 micro lectures, and then I got to my lesson next week, I'm like, what am I going to teach? You know, you're really, you're in trouble. What am I going to teach? Yeah. So, you know, you can either plan it top down or you can, I had to improvise. But then I went into some very creative workshop scenarios where the students were fully engaged and I was just walking around. The students were all viewing the web lectures as I was doing it. So recording it is perhaps the first step, but you also have to do that in conjunction, in conjunction with rethinking your curriculum, rethinking your assessments. So that one little video recording has a massive knock-on effect, really. And we're looking at that uh, with the community of practice within Holland, exactly that question. How do you do it at the right level? So it is a challenge. Yeah. 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 We started with something and then we're going to think through all the other yeah. So I'll repeat, the, the idea from, from the audience was that you can make the web lectures very interactive by posing questions, and I'm doing that as well in my lectures. Put it on pause, do the following assignment, stop it, come back, and then think about the next stage. And then I say something like, if you stopped it and went away and did the assignment, great. If you didn't, go back and do it. And You, know, you have to sort of have a dialogue with them. And that's also part of the... Uh, the, the benefit of uh, this teaching is it's one-to-one. -one. It's just you and the camera, and that translates to, to me as the teacher and the student, one-to-one. -one. So it has quite a lot of intimacy to it. Other questions? Yeah. Do you think it's important to make a connection to learning activities? So it's not only teacher-oriented and technical-oriented, yeah. but also the integration part, and to see which kind of tools you can connect or use to better... Uh, let students work on certain learning activities to yeah. help the teachers to interact better with them at the end and bring it to a higher context level yeah. because that's what you're doing. I think that's, th that's the, perhaps the most challenging question. How do you attach certain types of video teaching, certain types of technology to certain learning goals within the organization? We did. Yeah. We did in the European yeah. project. It's on webpatches.ml. Yeah. It's called the framework of Lucon. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Gritty was 
there yeah. worked uh, together with me to, to and wife John of the University called to London yeah. and we made that step. Yeah. We made that step to thirty seven pilots in the Oasis and yeah. we called together. So there's insights on There's a lot of information there on how to do it and it, it, no, it's just yeah. one framework. Yeah. So would that's uh, good to look at the web lectures which uh, yeah think so. yeah I absolutely don't know, but yeah yeah thank you um, other question yeah do you have any experience in life addressing uh, uh, different locations so being in one room addressing a group of students yeah. but having a separate group I, I haven't done that so much uh, I haven't really done that but it's it's a sort of a live a live lecture capture with live streaming yeah, yeah. So and there's quite Yeah. That's, that's the next step and I would put that one as the degree of complexity for the teacher that's moving up the level as well because you need to have your content and you also need to be managing the live audience here and the people online so it, I, I don't have experience of that sorry Yes, I think for the moment I don't have a need in my teaching because I don't have an audience somewhere else. If I had, if I was in Australia where a lot of the students are far away and they can't get to class, then I might be using it more. In the Netherlands I don't have that same geographical issue, but there are sometimes time issues. Or you can do evening classes or economies of scale, absolutely, yeah. Thank you for the question. Other questions? Yeah. Um, from the point of view of video teaching, uh, if you're doing a, a, a pre-recorded web lecture, you shouldn't improvise. You can't use the clicker. Um, you really need to have it structured closely. Um, trying to get rid of your erms and the ahs. Um, <laughs> basic things like how you appear, trying to have a consistent appearance. For teachers, we sometimes worry about being seen on screen. I don't really look as good as I thought I looked. And every time I look at the next video, I'm like, oh, I guess I am really getting older. You know, you can't, you can't deny that. Um, the students don't really care so much what you look like. They care what information has the teacher got for me and what can I do with it? Will it help me pass the, the exams? So, yeah, in the research, there's also... Um, yeah, there's a lot of literature on how to have a good screen image. Um, you can speak quite quickly on a video. Even the two times speed there that you saw, um, people can follow it. So don't speak too slowly. You can always be speeded up. And you've got to deliver your con You've got to think about chunking your content. If I'm doing a live lecture now, it's, it's not chunked. It's 30-minute it's recording. But if I'm doing a, a short web lecture, just one part. If you're doing the Porter's Five Forces model, don't do all five in one. Just do part one, part two, part three. And then you can have four slides, very concise. And you can just communicate. The student just wants to understand that bit. They can go to it. So there's more sort of do's. I, I, I prefer to focus on what you should be doing. The, the don'ts, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> you'll get feedback from your colleagues and from the students. Um, other, how are we doing for time? Question. One more question. Okay. How do you yeah. motivate your colleagues? Because, um, yeah. It is um, very hard to, to uh, get new technologies yeah. into school, yeah. into, uh, to so get other people um, see the op uh, opportunities or yeah. the, the important tools. So the question is, how do, I, how do I motivate my colleagues and how do you get new technology into the classroom? I've got a bottom-up approach. I'm starting one teacher at a time. I sort of call it the poffages, to use a Dutch uh, analogy. Poffages, you flip them over. You see it with a little fork, one at a time. So I'm doing, my approach is bottom-up from within my team, teacher, teacher at a time, to the other teams in other departments, to, to create a sort of an oil uh, that sort of spreads out. Uh, I've also spoken to the director, directors of, the, of in Holland and also to the domain directors saying, I'm doing this bottom up, I need your help top down. So I can't do it at a, at a broad level. The workshop I've developed is quite expensive. You've got to have uh, 
two, a, t a teacher and a, a trainer and staff and a technician and you have to uh, do it over a two hour period. So my question is how can I, can we make a MOOC out of that? Can we make it uh, available online so you can give each other online feedback? But what really works is taking person by the hand. It's that push that Tony gave me. You actually need to do that at one level and then hope that from top down there's also support. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and uh, say have a great uh, rest of the conference. Thank you very much. We hebben net vanochtend al gehoord dat als je je op het, op het, op het web begeeft, dan worden je sporen gevolgd. En voordat je het weet, krijg je een uh, advertentie omdat je ergens naar gegoogeld hebt. Of, of toch naar Hawaii of uh, zoals met jou gebeurde, een uh, nieuwe doelgroep. Maar omdat jullie hier zijn, weet ik dat jullie ook geïnteresseerd zijn in, uh, in deze zicht. Dus daar heb ik internet niet van nodig. Het is gewoon puur fysieke aanwezigheid. Heel veel van jullie uh, ken ik gewoon van gezicht, dus jullie kennen deze gezicht ook wel. Lees het even, ik ga het niet voorlezen. Als jullie geïnteresseerd zijn, er lopen een aantal mensen, alle niet volledig gekleed in een paars t-shirt. Het klant onder aan als je meer wilt weten. Er ligt daar wat boekleggers over weblekjes.nl. Die heeft een woord van weblekjes.nl. Nou, voor die drie mensen, voor die drie mensen, er liggen daar dus boekleggers. Lees het, kijk op die site, het is boordevol nuttige informatie als je een video in het... Uh, onderwijs wil gebruiken, uh, Zek heeft het genoemd, Sylvia ook. Um, en, en klamp ons aan als je meer wil weten en, en kom bij onze community. En dan als laatste. Thank you for this interesting presentation. This book is in Dutch, I think you can read it. If not, Dutch is student can read it. Thank you again. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks so much. Guys, a copy of the slides will be available um, to download and also the references are there if you, have, if you want to look at some of the research in more detail. If you'd like a copy of the uh, research, just email me. I'd be very happy to send it to you. And uh, I would also appreciate input on the model. And finally, if you haven't done any video teaching, send me the link when you're done. I'd love to see it.